Um, and now, uh, without discussion, we move to the last speaker of this uh, session, um, who is uh, Dr. Um, Srizavat from uh, Thailand, um, I guess from you know, Chula Longkorn, so I think that is not Bangkok, or it is Bangkok. Um, and um, uh, no, Chula Longkorn is apparently a king. Um, and he is going to tell us something of, our, of a problem that is concerning all of us and bothering all of us. It's COVID-19, and COVID-19 is associated with a cytokine storm. Uh, so we are interested to hear what absorption would do to this problem. Dr. Srizalat, you have the floor. Uh, th thank you, Professor Van Hoder, and uh, uh, for a kind introduction. And thank you, Jeffron, for, uh, for, for the invitation for me to share our experience to use the hemoperfusion in severe COVID-19. So uh, this is the outline of my presentation. The cytokine storm or the stage of like a immunodysregulation still have not a clear definition, but uh, this process is the, the process that you have like a massive activation of the immune system. Uh, you have a massive release of uh, the cytokine that was probably activation by the, the, the T cell, B cell, and uh, macrophage. When you have a cytokine storm in, uh, for example, in severe COVID-19, you will present like a, have a high fever that normally will persist, normally more persist more than a week. You're gonna have like a, a coughing, shortness of breath or fatigue and body pain. Some laboratory can suggest uh, the cytokine storm condition, like a high elevation of LDH, ferritin, CRP, ESR, and also the elevation of the cytokine. Uh, and the result of the cytokine storm can cause the, not only in the lung that cause the ARDS, but it's also lead into multiple organ dysfunction, including the cardiovascular instability, uh, abnormal coagulation, and also the severe acute kidney injury and massive leakage of the fluid. The cytokine storm in uh, COVID-19 actually is not a new one. Previously in, in the era of SARS or MERS also have uh, the, the evidence to support the, uh, the presence of the cytokine storm. In the cytokine storm, normally it's happened after the first week as that is the time, this is a death study from China that clearly show that uh, the, the timing that we should suspect about the cytokine storm normally apparent after one week. Another study also from China in Lancet also that the timing of the, uh, that we should suspect about the cytokine storm happened after the first week. Until the present time, we don't have a clear um, uh, pathway of the cytokine storm. Normally, this is like a schematic diagram to propose that after you have the SARS-CoV virus infection, they will have a activation of some uh, uh, inflammatory cell and lead to the cytokine production and lead to the multiple organ injury. And which cytokine play a role? Um, this is a study also from China that showed that, uh, like a 40 cytokine panel and showed that in the severe COVID-19 cases, you will have an uh, elevation of uh, some specific cytokine, like uh, IL-2, 7, GMCSF, interferon gamma, MCT, MIT-1, and TNF-alpha. This is look like the clinical of the, the stage that we call secondary um, hemophagocytosis. So this is a cytokine that might play a role during the uh, severe COVID-19 cytokine storm. One of the potential cells that was activated and discussed a lot during the past few months is a macrophage. In the macrophage, uh, uh, when there was activating, we call MAS or macrophage activating syndrome. You will have uh, engulfment of uh, red blood cell 
and also the platelet, you also have a massive release of the ferritin. And normally in this kind of the treatment, including the steroid, IVIG, and also you have the, like a second line and third line treatment. Uh, actually in the macrophage activating syndrome, it's not uh, the same uh, presentation like in the COVID-19. When you look into COVID-19, mainly the pathology is in the lung, but in the macrophage activating syndrome, you, you can see a lot of patients who have a, a peripheral organ injury and present like a hepatosplenomegaly. So still have some different and not the same uh, uh, pathway. What is the rationale to use the extracorporeal purification or EBP in uh, COVID-19 patients? As you may know that during the severe COVID-19 patient, you will have a stage of high pro-inflammatory cytokine, uh, as I mentioned before, and you also have the high anti-inflammatory response that we can express by testing the HLA-DR or chemotaxis activity. And both of them can make the worsening to our uh, organ function. And the EBP that we're talking about can uh, reduce the cytokine and the one that in the plus uh, signal. And after you remove more the cytokine, you will improve the cell function represented by the red uh, oval color that can move to the infected site better and you can control the inflammation and also the infection better. And we call this theory uh, cytokinetic theory. And so, and also this kind of the technique can uh, improve like a neutrophil chemotaxis activity. This is our data uh, published uh, two years ago that showed that after the chemoprofession technique, you can have an improve of the uh, immunosuppression by improved HLA-DR expression. A uh, recent uh, review article by Professor Ronko showed that the, uh, the chemoprofession technique can cut down the peak of the cytokine and also can improve the uh, organ injury. Uh, what are the EBP techniques that are available in COVID-19 patients? This is the list of the current device that we have. One of the potential device is, is uh, the hemoprofusion, we call the HA330, which is composite of uh, neutral resin and mainly absorb the cytokine like the uh, R6. In our institute, we have a uh, chance to test the uh, hemoprofusion by using the HA330 uh, in the setting of a severe COVID-19 patient. And this is the setting that we use. We use the blood flow rate around 120 to 150, two time session for two consecutive day. And each session using around four hour uh, and the standard coagulant, anticoagulant, we use a heparin. This is all three cases. Well, all of them receive the antiviral regimen but still have a worsening of the pulmonary function. You can see that the, the PF ratio or the, or the oxygenation index that should normally higher like a four or 500, but in this kind of COVID-19, you will have a below 300. And this is the, the PF ratio uh, from the start to the end of the treatment. And for the patient one also have a uh, improvement of the PF ratio and after the treatment and finally get the extubation. And this might take uh, a little bit time for, for the improvement. The second case also showed the improvement after the hemoperfusion and finally get extubation. The third case, you can see that the PF ratio not much changed, but uh, finally the patients get improved and got uh, uh, extubation also. And this is a cytokine panel that we measure. Most of the cytokine panel, that we, this is about a 30 panel. And the IL6 is one of the key cytokine that we measure. And you can see the reducing of the IL6 after uh, the treatment in two cases and not much change in the last case. This is the X-ray show the, uh, the, the, in, the infiltration and after the, the treatment um, to session, 
there are some uh, improvement of the radiologic uh, improvement. This is a radiography for case number two and number three. So the outcome of these three cases, they all survived and they also got uh, extubation. So in my conclusion, so uh, cytokine storm is one of the serious complication in uh, severe COVID-19. Until the present time, we still don't have a clear mechanism. And the EPP uh, from the rationale that we have and propose is one of the potential treatment that we use to uh, mitigate or to control the, the cytokine storm and prevent the organ dysfunction. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Srisava, for this uh, interesting presentation. Um, we were well in time for discussion.